Here we go and welcome to the IDF technology. My name is Michael and today it's all about the Rode Bitmic Pro Plus. Um, I'm just trying to upgrade my sound setting from the Bitmic Go to the Bitmic Pro Plus and just want to give you a quick unboxing hands-on first try and what are the possibilities and this probably the best settings um, to go with when you're vlogging or just some um, studio shooting. And I think, let's go. So um, first things first, um, what do we have in the box here? Gonna make a little bit more space here. The Mic Pro Plus, um, probably one year in the internet um, looking for the Vitamin Mic Pro and Pro Plus. It's a little bit confusing. They look a little bit different um, and they're, yeah, it's just the next iteration um, of the of this shotgun mic and don't get confused and um, here are some features that are pretty fancy and pretty important and that's the reason I will go for the Pro Plus and um, but we can talk about this later. Also a big plus, um, I'm a huge fan of the power function because at the moment um, I'm shooting with this mic, it's a passive mic so um, I have no problems or have, don't need to have in mind that um, this this mic is um, on when I'm when I'm shooting a video and with the new um, Vidmic Pro Plus I don't have this problem either because I just can just pop it in um, switch on the camera and this um, shotgun mic will also just switch on too it's pretty cool I must be honest I already opened it um, just for for one reason um, this is the second video mic Pro Plus I got um, the first one is uh, was somehow in this box um, so I already got one and I opened it up and I tried to turn it on and I got run into a little a problem I can show you because um, the problem was when you insert the um, rechargeable battery there is a little bit of a twist or maybe a little problem I got a Monday production somehow and I messed it up totally and the whole product is just ruined um, I need to send it back to Amazon. So we got in here this the video, my plus, just the battery, the cable, typical um, USB type A to micro USB. This microphone doesn't have a USB type C connector. Um, you can see it on this side, it's just a normal a micro USB, but Okay, it's 2018, maybe there they could improve, but um, at the moment we're stick to a USB Type A to micro USB. Uh, we also don't need the cable at the moment, um, it's just these three pieces here. So as you can see first, um, yeah, the shape is a little bit different to the Video Mic Pro and also some improvement when it comes to the um, battery compartment. So you just pop it up open by pressing these two together. So now you have the chance to insert the uh, rechargeable battery and you probably don't need to put, them, put that out again. Um, you can run this baby with two type A batteries. Um, so just the normal type A batteries, you probably know. And you can just leave it open and just go for the micro USB port and use um, maybe power bank or something like this yeah or just power outlet or something whatever you have there um, you just need uh, five volts one ampere so just typical um, Apple charger is totally fine so you uh, probably you will never run out of battery with this guy and I think a whole charge of um, the integrated lithium battery is 70 hours so we'll pop that in and this is the exact point I messed up with the previous version um, because you have just this one chance here, this notch and this plastic piece, but here's some um, metal pin in there. Um, it's not a con connector to, to, to run the power through the battery, it's just a more like um, a metal pin to, to, can, to, do, to be able to insert the battery more easy. But, um, in my version, there was a little bit of a little flex in the metal pin, and I just bent the pin inside the battery compartment, and now the whole microphone was messed up. Yeah, that's the whole story. So just keep in mind when you pop it in, it feels a little bit weird because you have to put a little 
too much pressure on the battery in my opinion like this and just pop it in and now we're ready so typical cold mount shoe a really stiff record lure because um, this guy is really heavy especially when you compare it especially when you compare it to the video mic go so in size we have a little upgrade i would say and also in weight this weighs probably around about um, three times as much as this one also this cable feels really durable and also flex is really good but i must be honest I like more the um, cable from the video mic go because you have this kind of flex and it's not messing around around your camera when you're on the go. Probably this is the better cable device anyway. First upgrade from the video mic pro to the video mic pro plus is um, yeah first hand the the battery compartment and the second thing is also the possibility to turn it on and turn it off automatically. So I got the mentioned um, GH5 with me and when I now turn it on and you can see it probably here pretty good yep um, every time you turn the camera on or turn it off like this just needs a few seconds and they're up and running so now let's talk about the cool features I think um, they're pretty much and it's not that easy to figure them out um, yeah, I think um, when the power button is just solid blue, um, you're using the internal battery. When it's on green, you're using two um, type A batteries or the external uh, option with the micro USB port. It's also totally fine. If it's red, you just have around about 10 hours left of uh, recording time. Um, when it's slow blinking red, you're around about uh, two hours left and fast blinking red, you're just having around about 30 minutes left. So just keep in mind um, the color code. If you're not talking about the settings, so this mic has uh, a solid um, amount of possibilities for presetting your audio before it comes to the camera and before you're fiddling around with the audio in the pre um, post-production. But um, so we now keep in mind or a look on the possibilities and the LEDs on the back of the microphone. So we have here on the right um, two possible settings for the um, gain, the gain, the volume gain, um, minus 10 and plus 20 dB. We can set this with this button here. So we have plus 20 or minus 10 depending on your environment and how loud or noisy it is around about you. On the left side we will have the high pass filter. The high pass filter is probably better when you're uh, running something like a ventilator or AC or cars in the background or just some noises from, from bus or something like this. This is a good idea to, to use so you have the chance to activate it with one press on 75 hertz so it's just really low or 150 hertz and so just the the double amount and you need to fill around if it's just how how high are the frequencies you just want to cut out <laughs> so you have two more options you can go um which are pretty cool is the safety channel here in the middle that's this led you can activate it by pressing the or pressing the uh, power button and the db button and now um you set the um right dual mono channel 10 decibels lower so um, if you're outside recording and maybe just you're recording like this with overall plus 20 decibels because you need to have a longer distance and you need to raise all the the audio gain but um, there are some peaks and you probably don't um, know about and you just have the problem that there's some some noise cutting and the, the limiter gets on you have the chance not to use the left channel, which would be just plus 20, uh, because you also have the safety channel with its just normal um, 10 decibels lower than the left one. They're both just mono, so it's totally fine. But uh, in my opinion, you always just you should use the safety channel activated because, um, yeah, who cares? You can always go for the left channel. And there's just one left, and which is also pretty cool, especially when you're using some sort of windshield or just some um, dead cat or something over your um, video mic pro plus. You can just turn it on by pressing um, these two buttons at the same time. And this is the high frequency boost. So normally it would be 
um, more more muddy. The the voices turn more muddy when you use the windshield um, because of the extra cushion around about it. But um, if you're activating the high frequency boost, all this all the um, frequencies over 70,000 hertz will get an extra boost of five decibels. And that's pretty cool because now you have the chance um, to, to get more crisp and crunchy audio even when you're going with some sort of dead cat or windshield. Um, you will also have the chance to deactivate the auto turn on or auto turn off settings like I already um, show, showed you, but who really wants to turn that off? I, I, I don't know the point or I don't know the scenario where, where it's just necessary or just a good idea to do so. But you can do it if you're just holding these two buttons a little bit longer. You saw all four LEDs turn off and on. And now we all set. Uh, I deactivated and activated again. But probably you will never do this. It's just not necessary. So that's it. Um, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about your VideoMic Pro Plus and how to use the right settings. I will also just put down a link in the video description to to Amazon so you just can go right there and buy the microphone if you just don't have it yet and I will also put a link down to some more footage um, about the uh, VideoMic Pro Plus you can see on how the different settings will sound I think that's also a big plus for you and if you dislike this video you know what to do but if you liked it just hit like and get subscribed and enable the notification with the bell icon that would be also pretty cool so you won't miss any future video and i think um thank you and see you next time bye so we are now shooting with the video mic pro plus from rode and now i'm just using the just the shotgun mic without any presets so that's just the normal sound you get out of the microphone and now we will try all the different uh, settings we can get and see if the audio is just getting better or worse um, we'll find out about the settings so we got a light wind around about uh, three to five kilometers per hour and I'm standing on the balcony um, and right down there so just um, pedestrians and the road is just over there so um, probably we'll hear some um, noises from the car and maybe just some kids yelling in the background and I think that's just a really typical vlogging setup I guess now I'm activated the probably most common um, setting you will use on your video mic pro plus it's just the high frequency blue boost so you just can push your, your high frequencies in your audio, I think it's around about 7000 Hertz um, with a plus of 5 decibels, so you will probably always go with this setting because you can now push your high frequencies for the S's and all the other sounds around about this, um, so it's more crispy and crunchy and I think probably you will hear the difference. I now also activated the um, safety channel, so the right channel is now minus 10 dB, but you will probably don't hear this, it's just dual mono, I will always go for the, the left channel, and if there's some clipping in the audio level, I will also try to use some of the right channel to um, cut down the clipping a little bit, but um, probably you, you will not hear the difference between this um, setting here and the previous setting without the uh, safety channel. We will now try to cut down a little bit the background noise and there must be a little bit from some cars in the background and also the train station isn't far away. Um, now I'm using the um, 75 version so we are now trying to um, get rid of the 75 um, Hertz ratio on the on the audio level and maybe it sounds now a little bit better because of the lower uh, background noise. And now the same with the 150 version. Um, at the moment it's a little bit quieter. I don't know if you hear the difference between the 75 and the 150. I must be honest for myself. It always depends on the situation and all the noise in the background. If you go for the 
just zero or so disable the whole setting go for the 75 or just go for the 150 um, you just figure out to yourself um, if you how far you want to cut down the background noise and how annoying are probably the AC or the cars in the background this is gonna be probably a little bit louder than the previous versions um, of the clips because now I um, shut down the high pass filter and activated the gain boost so we now got 20 decibels uh, gain boost and that's the reason why we now go for minus 10 dB um, I'm just doing this vlogging setup so I can go a little bit far more away or can get a little bit closer and um, I can see the the audio is just good good bouncing in between I think I can probably also go for this minus 10 dB but um, it's more likely to use it when it's a little bit noisy environment and you have to shoot to um, shouting to your camera but um, now you can hear it it's just pretty low it's now 30 decibels lower than the previous clip and um, I will now switch back to the zero decibels um, so no audio gain and I also can probably adjust it right in the camera so these are the settings of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus um, I will probably go for the high frequency boost um, activated at the moment I will also use the safety channel I think that's big bonus and third I will now try to shoot outside with um, 75 decibels on high pass filters so I'm filtering out the really um, low noises and probably the, this rumbling in the background um, is not a problem anymore so this is probably my setup for um, the audio and maybe I need to do something in the post-production but at the moment I think that's a pretty good setting